We now cross live to Abuja, where the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Godwin Emefiele, is speaking after the Monetary Policy Committee meeting. The Chinese economy remains confronted with the lingering impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, total lockdown of major cities, significant distortions in property market, and modest inflationary pressures. Consequently, advanced economy, the advanced economy and emerging market economy, central banks alike, are switching to monetary policy tightening to curb the sharp rise in, inf in inflation globally. Even as global output, output growth recovery moderates, the domestic economy is expected to remain on the current path of recovery through 2022. This is hinged on the continued impact of stimulus by both the monetary and fiscal authorities to support the economy following the outbreak of COVID-19 pandemic and the committee assessed these developments and the outlook for the rest of the year. 11 members of the committee attended this meeting, the global economic development. The global, global output commenced a broad slowdown in the first quarter of 2022 as a result of the conflict between Russia and Ukraine after recovering considerably in 2021. This led to massive supply constraints with the backlash of sanctions against Russia, creating huge macroeconomic imbalances for several countries. Consequently, the uncertainties that have arisen are buoyed by the resumption of the spread of, of the COVID-19 pandemic in China, a key hub of global manufacturing. This has given rise to upside risks to inflation and downside risks to growth. In addition, the huge amount of stimulus deployed by various countries to ease the downsides of the COVID-19 pandemic, particularly in 2021, has predisposed the global economy to huge debt levels, considering the current burgeoning global private and public debt portfolios. Central banks in both the advanced and emerging market economies have thus commenced monetary policy tightening to curb rising prices. These could impact the recovery negatively and result in a rise in debt default as global financial conditions indeed get, get tighter. Furthermore, China has also reintroduced constraining measures to mitigate the spread of a new wave of COVID-19 pandemic within its major industrial cities, resulting in a slowdown in production. In the light of these headwinds, the International Monetary Fund IMF downgraded its forecast for global output growth for 2022 and 2023 to 3.6% apiece from 44 and 3.8% respectively, reflecting the, severe, the severity of setbacks to the global recovery. Inflation continues to rise unabated across several advanced economies and is projected to remain high, at least in the medium term, as food and energy prices pushed higher to levels not previously recorded in four decades. This is due to tightening supply and tightening supply and misclosure of major trade routes that supply input for food and fertilizer, as well as high price of energy. In the emerging market and developing economies, inflation also remained high due to a combination of persisting high food and energy prices, supply chain disruptions associated with the impact of the sanctions against Russia, exchange rate pressure, capital flow reversals, as well as underlying legacy matters. In the global financial market, investor confidence is gradually being restored evidenced by portfolio rebalancing with the gradual decline in gold price. The demand for advanced, economy, for advanced economic equities and bonds has improved with the commencement of interest rate lift-off, led by the US Fed and the Bank of England, resulting in the outflow of capital from margin market securities. Global financial conditions are thus expected to tighten in the near term as risk Adverse investors real, reassign substantial portions of their portfolios from perceived riskier, though more rewarding emerging market securities, to less risky advanced economy securities. In general, the global economy and financial markets are confronted with significant risks in the medium term 
as the huge buildup of both private and public debt has may push several fragile economies into a new era of recession and domestic development. According to the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics, MBS, real GDP grew by 3.11% in the first quarter of 2022, compared with 3.98% in the fourth quarter of 2022, and 0.51% in the corresponding period of 2021. This is the sixth consecutive quarter of real output expansion following the economy's exit from recession in 2020. This steady positive performance was driven largely by the growth in aggregate consumption arising from the continued policy support at the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic and a gradual recovery of aggregate demand. Headline inflation year-on-year -year ticked up to 16.82% in April 2022 from 15.92% in March 2022, a 90 basis point increase. This is the third consecutive increase in inflation since the commencement of the year 2022, attributable to the rise in both the core and food components to 14.18 and 18.37% in April 2022, from 13.91 and 17.2% in March 2022, respectively. The rise in core inflation resulted from, from rising energy prices associated with, with the epileptic supply of premium motor spirit, high cost of automotive gas oil, mostly used in transportation and production, as well as progressive hike in electricity tariffs. The increase in the food component was driven by the shocks to food prices associated with persistent security challenges in major food producing areas and legacy infrastructural problems which continue to hamper food supply, logistics, and storage across the country. Broad money supply M3 rose significantly to 6.22% in April 2022, compared with 4.19% in March 2022. This was largely driven by strong growth in the net domestic assets NDA of 11.86% in April 2022, compared with 8.82% in the previous month. The growth in NDA was attributed to the increase in claims on the federal government and other sectors, other sectors, particularly public, non-financial corporations, private sector, and state and local governments. Money market rates oscillated within and outside the standing facility corridor, reflecting the prevailing liquidity conditions in the banking system. Consequently, the monthly weighted average open buyback rate, OBB, and interbank call rates increased to 7.49 and 8.67% in April 2022, from 6.62 and 4.5% in March 2022, respectively. The increase in rates was an indication of the tight liquidity conditions in the banking system during the review period. The performance of the equities, equities market remained strong and positive in the review period, with the All Share Index ASI and market capitalization increasing significantly from 46,965.48 and 25.31 trillion naira on March 31, 2022, to 52,979.48 and 28.56 trillion naira on May 20, 2022, respectively. In the banking system, the capital adequacy ratio and the liquidity ratio remained above their prudential limits of 14.6 and 43.7% respectively. The non-performance loans ratio stood at 5.3% in April 2022 compared with its prudential limit of 5% reflecting sustained stability in the banking system. Gross external reserve re 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 declined moderately to $38.36 billion as at May 19, 2022 from $29.28 billion at the end of March 2022. This was attributed to the weak accretion to the reserve from exports and the high cost of importation of refined petroleum uh, products. The committee reviewed the performance of the bank's intervention schemes targeted at stimulating productivity in agriculture, manufacturing and industries, energy and infrastructure, healthcare and export, and micro, small and medium enterprises. 
Between April and May 2022, the bank released the sum of 57.9 billion under the Anchor Brass program to 185,972 new projects for the cultivation of rice, wheat, and maize, bringing the cumulative disbursement under the program to 1.01 trillion naira. Disbursed over 4.2 million smallholder farmers cultivating 21 different commodities across the country. The bank further disbursed the sum of 1.5 billion naira under the Accelerated Agriculture Development Scheme AADS to 1,000 new youth-led projects piloted and funded through the government of Undo State for the acquisition of assets for oil palm cultivation and the establishment of poultry farms. This brings, and this is a very encouraging development for Undo State leading the pack on agriculture for the oil palm cultivation um, and other agricultural initiatives. This brings the total disbursement under the scheme to 21.23 billion naira for 10 state-led and three private sector-led projects. In addition, the bank released 21.73 billion naira to finance seven large-scale agricultural projects under the Commercial Agricultural Credit Scheme. The funds were utilized for the establishment of a ranch and milk processing facility, procurement of feed and medication for livestock and dairy production, construction of a 300 metric ton per day oil mill in Guzo, San State, acquisition and installation of an agricultural agrochemical factory, as well as purchase and stockpiling of homegrown maize for animal feed production. This brings the cumulative disbursement under the scheme to 741.05 billion naira for 674 projects in agro production and agro processing. Under the party aggregation, 6.2 billion naira was disbursed by the bank to three new projects for the purchase and mopping up of homegrown rice paddy. This brings the total funds disbursed to 42 integrated rice mills to about 106. Under the party aggregation scheme, to 106.39 billion. To support the growth of the manufacturing sector, the bank disbursed the sum of 436.85 billion to 34 new projects under the 1 trillion real sector support facility. This was utilized for both greenfield and brownfield expansion projects under the COVID-19 intervention for the manufacturing sector and real sector support facility from differentiated cash reserve DCRR. Community disbursement under the RSSF for financing of 402 real sector projects across the country currently stands at 2.1 trillion naira. The bank disbursed 55.34 billion naira under the 100 for 100 on production and productivity to 44 projects comprising 24 in manufacturing, 17 in agriculture, 2 in the healthcare, and 1 in the services sector. In the healthcare sector, the bank disbursed 17.7 billion to four healthcare projects under the healthcare sector intervention facility, bringing the cumulative disbursement to 130.49 billion naira for 126 projects comprising 58 hospitals, 31 pharmaceuticals, and 37 other healthcare services. The bank released the sum of 21 billion under the Export Facilitation Initiative (EFI) for three projects in domestic production and value addition of cocoa and sesame seed. This intervention is targeted at further expansion of the economy's non-oil sector, non-oil export basket, towards improving foreign exchange revenue earnings for the country. To support micro, small and medium enterprises, the bank disbursed 1.5 billion to 2,718 new projects through the Agribusiness Small and Medium Enterprise Investment Scheme Axmis for activities in fish farming, rice processing, wheat farming, poultry farming, livestock farming, ICT, and tailoring, among others. This brings the community disbursement under the Axmis to 136.13 billion Nora. Under the Micro Small and Medium Enterprise Scheme, the bank disbursed 2.7 billion to support youths engaged at various nodes of the agricultural value chain, bringing the total disbursement under this intervention to 98.88 billion naira to 749 MSME projects across the country. In the area of energy and, in, energy and infrastructure, the CBN released 15.71 billion to power sector players 
including generating companies and gas companies. Under the, under the Nigerian Bulk Electric Tra Trading PLC, NB, NB, NBET PAF, bringing cumulative disbursement under the facility to 1.3 trillion naira. The sum of 22.67 billion was also released to distribution companies for, the, for their operational expenditure and capital expenditure under the Nigerian Electricity Market Stabilization Facility Phase 2. Cumulative disbursement under this scheme currently stands at 251.93 billion naira. Additionally, under the National Mass Metering Program, the bank has disbursed 0.19 billion naira to discos for the procurement of electricity meters, bringing the community disbursement for the procurement and installation of 865,956 electricity meters across the country to 47.82 billion naira. Interventions in the energy and infrastructure are designed to improve investment and develop enabling infrastructure in the Nigerian electricity supply industry. Our outlook. The broad outlook for both the global and domestic economies in the medium term remain clouded with uncertainties are arising from the lingering war between Russia and Ukraine, the unfolding impact of the extensive sanctions imposed by several countries on Russia, and the downside risks from the continued spread of COVID-19 pandemic. Global growth is thus confronted with significant headwinds which may derail the current projection further. The persistent rise in inflation is also set to undermine the recovery of growth of output growth due to the associated build-up of uncertainties around the cost of inventory and other production um, imputes. The rise in global debt is also an unfolding dilemma which policymakers must carefully evaluate an address to avert a near-term global financial crisis. In summary, while global, global, global aggregate demand remains strong and growing, the numerous supply-side constraints will continue to undermine the recovery effort, at least in the short to medium term. In the domestic economy, data on key macroeconomic variables indicate that the recovery of output growth will continue but at a much subdued pace, considering the unfolding domestic and external shocks to our economy. Domestic price development is, however, expected to maintain an upward pressure in the light of the build-up of increased spending related to the 2023 general elections. Consequently, the Nigerian economy is forecast to grow by 3.24% by the CBN estimate, 4.2% Federal Government of Nigeria estimate and 3.4% IMF estimate. The committee's consideration. At this meeting, the NPC noted the risk confronting the global economy as those associated with not only inflation and prices, but also include risks associated with weakening growth prospects across the, across the world. The committee observed that whereas post-pandemic policy support has remained broadly expansionary, at least from a fiscal standpoint, the sharp rise in inflation across both the advanced and emerging market economies has generated growing concern among central banks as the progressive rise in inflation driven by rising aggregate demand and wage growth is putting on sustainable upward pre pressure on price levels. Consequently, the major central banks such as the US Fed, the Bank of England, European Central Banks, and the Bank of Canada have provided strong guidance of a progressive shift away from monetary policy accommodation to dry market interest rate upwards, which may ultimately impact capital flows away from emerging market economies. On another hand, MPC noted that the war between Russia and Ukraine has resulted in significant disruptions of the global, of the, to the global supply chain at a time that the global economy is still confronted with downsized risks to growth associated with post-COVID-19 pandemic. In addition to this, global trade has been impacted by the series of restrictions imposed by NATO countries 
and its allies against trade with Russia. This has increasingly fragmented the global economy, imposing huge restraints on the tepid post-pandemic recovery. Only recently, China, US, South Africa are seeing renewed up renewed spike in COVID-19 infections. For instance, the Chinese government recently reintroduced lockdown in major industrial cities to forestall the spread of the pandemic, further disrupting the supply chain crisis. In the view of the NPC, these two risks pose great challenges to rising inflation globally. As for our domestic economy, NPC noted with the light that the GDP grew by 3.11% in the first quarter of 2022 year on year, highlighting a steady recovery for the fifth consecutive quarter. Quarter on quarter, real GDP grew by 9.36%, a slight moderation from 11.07% during the previous quarter. MPC, however, was concerned about the somewhat aggressive rise in inflation by almost 90 basis points in April of 2022. To dampen the expectation of the inflationary pressure, MPC decided on the need to take a shift from its historically cautious approach on interest rate to a policy rate hike while still adopting an accommodative approach to development finance initiatives that have helped historically the growth of the Nigerian economy and sustain a recovery. Emphasis of the view that rates on the development finance initiatives of the, of the CBN should remain at 5% at least till March 2023. Consequently, as regards the decision on whether to hold, tighten, or loosen, MPC feels that loosening in the face of rising policy rates in advanced economies may result in sharp rise in capital outflow and faster dry up of foreign credit lines. MPC also feels that loosening could lead to further liquidity surfeit and inflationary pressures. As to whether to hold, MPC feels, MPC feels um, that strengthening the that this will strengthen the perception that CBN has abandoned its primary mandate of taming inflation. On the need to tighten, MPC feels compelled that tightening would help moderate the inflationary trade-off from the steady growth recovery so far recorded and improve real GDP. MPC also feels that tightening will help rein in inflation before it assumes a galloping trend, considering the progressive increase in headline inflation month on month, particularly with the sharp 90 basis points increase recorded in April of 2022. Furthermore, MPC feels that tightening would narrow the negative real interest rate margin, improve market sentiment, and restore investors' confidence. Equally, Members believe tightening would moderate inflationary pressure, pass through to exchange rate depreciation, and moderate the speed of capital flow reversal, provide incentives for foreign capital inflows, and sustain remittances. Lastly, tightening, tightening could moderate government more, more domestic borrowing as government debt servicing to revenue ratio increased significantly in recent times and threatening debt sustainability, the committee's decision. Members expressed deep concern about the continued uptrend of inflationary pressure. Despite the gradual improvement in output growth, committee noted that the current rise in inflation may be inimical to growth and thus hinder the full recovery of the Nigerian economy. While MPC identifies several supply-side factors which may be contributing to inflationary pressure, Imagine evidence show that money demand pressure is on the rise and is unlikely to abate until the 2020 general elections are over. The dilemma confronting the monetary policy at this meeting, therefore, is how best to drive down domestic prices, in this case inflation, while at the same time continue to support the fragile recovery of the Nigerian economy. In the light of the current circumstance, Committee was of the view 
that it was confronted with the choice of either to hold all policy parameters constant, to allow previous policy measures continue to support growth or tighten the stance of policy, to curb money demand growth and development of its domestic prices. A losing option would likely result in an increased liquidity surface rise in inflationary pressure and further pressure on our exchange rate. The choice of holding, in the view of members, would not only continue to support growth, even though moderately, but will also allow the growth of money's demand to continue at the current pace, leading to the optic inflationary pressure. While growth concerns remain paramount to the committee, the persistent optic in domestic price levels is clearly a downside risk to growth that must be taken on immediately. While it may seem contradictory to raise rates in the face of fragile growth, it is a dilemma that most central banks around the world today are grappling with at, at this time. Yet, on balance, it is quite clear and compelling that tackling inflation is more urgent in the sequence of policy objectives. In this regard, MPC urged the bank to redouble its efforts at supporting the priority growth enhancing sectors of the economy while urging the federal government to do more to provide a safe and secure environment for economic agents to boost activities and eventually stimulate growth. After carefully reviewing the developments of the last two months and outlook for both the domestic and global economies, as well as the benefits and downsides of each policy option, the committee decided to raise monetary policy rate the first in two and a half years to rein in, in, to, to rein in the current rise in inflation as members were of the view that the continued uptrend may adversely impact growth. The bank for that area found its commitment to continue to provide support to priority sectors as the need arises to support growth until the current upward pressure in price development abates. The committee therefore decided by unanimous vote to raise monetary policy rate. Six members voted to raise the MPR by 150 basis points, four members by 100 basis points, and one member by 50 basis points to 13.5%. In summary, MPC voted to 1. raise NPR to 13%, 13 2. retain a symmetric corridor of, 10, of plus 100 and minus 700 basis points around the NPR, retain the CRR at 27%, but also urged the management to continue to use its discretionary powers to mop up liquidity where they find it to ensure that we maintain a very tight monetary uh, liquidity in the system. And four, retain liquidity ratio at 30%. I thank you all for your attention. Thank you, Governor. Uh, that was the uh, 142 uh, communicator of the FBC meeting held 23rd, 24th, May 2022. Um, we will take some questions. We will observe, gentlemen, first that um, we dropped the time for these uh, to see from 2 to uh, 12 due to some uh, exigencies. So I will appeal and uh, also apologize up front uh, that we may not be able to take all of your questions. Uh, same for our friends who are also online, uh, probably will not be able to take all of your questions. So uh, keep it simple and stay to Thank you.
Good afternoon, members of uh, the committee. My name is Sonia Michael Koko, I write for David Trust. And recently, we learned that JP Morgan had delisted Nigeria from the emerging marketplace, especially at the time where we need all the dollars available to support a uh, local situation. What is your reaction to this development? Thank you. Um, thank you. Um, that was what we did. Governor, sir. Well, uh, thank you very much. I think for me, the easier one first, the easier one will be the issue of JP Morgan that were delisted. Let me say that um, uh, contrary to us, widespread uh, media reports that Nigeria has not, uh, reports have it that we were delisted or that we were removed from the JP Morgan bond index. And the truth is that that is very untrue. Nigeria is still in the index. Um, we were only um, reclassified, Nigeria's uh, rating, I would say, was reclassified from overweight to market weight, which is just a mere reclassification of our size in the index, akin to a rating agency changing your outlook from maybe positive to stable. This is basically what, is, what has happened. So let me say, I repeat, Nigeria has not been delisted from any JP Morgan bond index. We have the report here, page 10 of it, I, would, I won't bore you with it. Those of you can go online, you can go online and read it. Page 10 speak was specifically de devoted to Nigeria and it was very, very clear the reason why Nigeria was, uh, Nigeria's rating was moved from overweight to just market weight. Uh, I don't think it is important for me to say what they said. If you read the report yourself, you will see that it is not as a result of certain failure or failings on the part of the Central Bank of Nigeria. What is important is that, at least one thing that they have said very clearly, is that Nigeria had been left as, as an overweight country because they felt that as an oil producing country, a creation to reserve in the needs of an increase of increase in crude price should result in a creation in reserve. And since they are seeing that this is not happening, that is the reason Nigeria's weight has been brought from overweight to market weight. But I think the other details are there in the report. The other questions from Nancy and New Telegraph are basically related to uh, the main reasons for today's meeting um, on inflation, NPR, why the central bank decided after almost about two and a half years to change its stance from just being somewhat accommodative in, um, by saying that yes, um, we want to play soft because we see we're trying to see a gradual moderation in inflation rates, while at the same time we see to how we gradually boost growth, output growth in the country. However, you all, um, we, uh, the, the community has spoken very extensively about the concerns about the global rise, inflation, and price levels. Um, you all would have seen that the price of crude uh, quite unexpectedly has been at above $100 per barrel. In fact, Nigeria's bonnie light, uh, is, as at yesterday when we started the meeting, was about $116 uh, per barrel. And um, what this means is that the basic plot, plot what is called the standard pricing um, indicator, means that, yes, whereas crude prices have gone up uh, per barrel, but at the same time, the, the cost of refinery and ultimate price of the product at the pump, at the pump, is at the station, the pump price at the station, will not really have gone up. This is a global phenomenon. And I was watching CNN a few days ago, and one of the analysts was talking about an incredible distortion to financial markets in the United States. And I said, yes, we well, are welcome to a situation where, whereas inflation is rising to unprecedented levels in the, in, in the US and other economies, growth is also coming down. And if you must tackle inflation prices, and at the same time you want growth, then you know that you are faced with some compelling dilemma as to what to do. You like to see inflation come down, but at the same time, you want growth to go up. But to achieve this, you have to take two, you have to take decisions that are in opposite direction. And that brings to bear as to 
what type of skills do you have have you put in place to ensure that you're able to manage these two in a way that you maintain a balance where you say moderation and inflation and at the same time you grow you grow you grow your your economy for the global economy like i said we've seen inflation in the u.s hit 8.3 percent on the unprecedented in decades in the euro area we've seen inflation hit 7.4 7, in uk nine percent in china to as high as 2.1 in india about 7.79 percent these are price levels that are presented in decades and that is the reason the global economy particularly the central banks or monetary policy authorities are, glo are globally are thinking of that the need for them to to confront inflation and to do this means that um, a lot of tough decisions have to be taken for us in nigeria you would have observed that in the last two and a half years what we have been saying is that we want to pursue a policy of price stability that is conducive to growth and that's why somehow we have been we have used our uh, development finance intervention uh, facilities which has actually which has actually yielded positive results and help to help to drive growth in our economy we've used that to drive growth while at the same time we try as much as possible to maintain a whole position while looking at the optimal level of liquidity in the industry to be able to moderate inflation at a level that does not hurt the, the growth and the economy of our country. But with what we have seen globally, either in the area of supply chains, in the area of increase in price of petroleum products and the rest of them, we have seen an aggressive growth in inflation in Nigeria between March and April of 2022. And the, the forecasts from our statisticians, both in CBN and the NBS, as well as our colleagues in research and monetary policy, is that unless something drastic, some, some drastic or significant actions are taken, that it will be difficult for us to really rein in inflation um, if we don't do something immediately. And that's the reason we felt, okay, for monetary policy, like I said, three things. One, use development finance tools to drive growth and see to how you can use those same tools through the granting of facilities at low interest rate, five year, five percent, ten year loan, two year, uh, ten year loan with two year moratorium and single digit interest rate, to see how you can use that to drive agricultural and manufacturing output to a level where it can even be seen to be positive on um, prices that are like moderating prices. That is one. So what do you achieve with both that? You achieve, um, you achieve output growth, manufacturing output and agricultural output through our various intervention and tar targeted credit facilities and SMEs, you can boost consumption expenditure and through that boost growth. But by the fact that you are boosting manufacturing and agricultural output, what you find is that we are also positively impacted, impacting prices, which also is effectively inflation. That's one approach we thought we should adopt. Another approach we are adopting all along is to see to to given uh, the NPC game management the power to say listen use this, your discretionary power to manage the level of liquidity in the system to a point where you think that it, it do, does not hamper it does not hamper um hamper, I mean, create serious problems for inflation but with what has, what is happening globally on prices and output and then we've seen an aggressive a, 900, a 90 basis points increase in inflation for us and with an expectation that it may even further continue at the aggressive rise meant that we needed to bring into the, into the, into the football field now NPR to further say that we need interest rates to move up particularly in the non-priority sectors that we are looking at that there's a need for interest rate to be signaled and a little bit more aggressive because people would have you would have expected that the RAS would have done a signaling, but NPC felt that a 150 basis points would be had, would be necessary to to really show that we want to truly tame inflation and rein it to a level that we think it can begin to reverse rather than continuing to go go up. So what are we doing to make sure that this does not affect? Um, because of course you will expect that lending rates will go up. Yes, lending rates will go up. To the non-priority sectors, we're not going to we're not going to deny that. But at least to our priority sectors, where we remain committed to 
MPC has told management, continue your development finance uh, activities at single digit interest rates for 10 years loan and two years moratorium. Whereas what we can call the non-priority ones, if they go up, then we should be able to use that as a basis to see to how we're able to tame inflation to a level that we think is comfortable. I think what is important here is that this decision has been taken because we felt that there may continue in the next couple of months to be an aggress aggressive acceleration in inflation. And we think there is a need to take some drastic action to reverse it. If we're able to see a reversal, perhaps we can begin to see here we're returning to what we can call the normal period when we're looking at moderating, using CRR to moderate, moderate inf inflation and at the same time using our development finance to, to really push for growth. It's not an easy task and, and I'm sure you can see the way I'm, I'm trying to explain it but, um, but I think trying to understand the mindset of monetary policy committee members at this time is very very important that we thought we needed to really really speak what is true about, in, about our economy, about what is happening globally and then see to how we can make sure that we tame inflation which is a core mandate and at the same time we support growth in the other direction so that Nigerians can see prosperity effectively. So I thank you for your attention. Good afternoon again. Um, thank you, Dr. Um, with that, we come to the end of this uh, Thank you, and God bless. Thank you. Uh,